I really want to chug chug. Oh, what's up, Click21? Welcome back to a new video, guys. Today, we're going to be covering Fortnite. Yes, we love Fortnite. We love Fortnite. To give you a break from that stupid Amber Heard and Johnny Depp trial, that's all you're hearing about, guys. I'm going to be breaking down the basics of the Fortnite Chapter 3 Season 1 pack. I'm not going to be going into a whole lot of gameplay or anything like that. I just want to break down the pack, what it does for you, and how to set it up. So let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Alright guys, two things before we jump into the video. As you all know, a lot of you guys are coming from Warzone. So we do have a Patreon if you play Warzone where we have spreadsheet values and killer kill shot scripts that even work with Apex and Fortnite. So guys, if you want to check out the Patreon, get help one-on-one -on -one setting up your Cronus or access to any of those spreadsheets or any of those scripts, make sure you guys check it out in the link below. And of course, we do have an affiliate link through NordVPN, which is telling me I need to update it. I always use NordVPN, guys, to protect myself from outside threats on all my devices. This also can help you bypass some skill-based matchmaking, get into easier lobbies. You can play in different servers across the country and across the world as long as you're okay with the higher ping. And of course, you can get a better router that can help with that as well which we'll get into in another video guys but definitely check out nordvpn 30 day money back guarantee other than that let's jump into the good stuff so i haven't been playing fortnite in forever what feels like and then of course they come out with the no build mode which i absolutely love i've been killing it lately getting back in the groove it's not easy going from warzone for a couple years back to fortnite getting used to all the controls and all the building and stuff like that so i've been playing no build for the most part but I did want to break down this pack, kind of give you an idea of what this basic pack does. And then we'll kind of explain what it can do in the future with different macros and stuff like that. Especially for those that are on mouse and keyboard. Now, of course, the first thing that the Cronus is going to do when it comes to Fortnite is it's going to improve your aim assist a little bit. But that's only going to be mainly to mid and close range. You will notice a little bit of a difference when you shoot somebody maybe out of the air. Or especially in close range fights, you will get a little bit tad better aim assist. And you'll notice your controller shake a little bit. But when it comes to long range, because of the bloom option, guys, it's not going to be like aimbot. I don't care what anybody says. It's just going to enhance your tracking and your aim that you already have. So if you already have really good aim, it's just going to make you an even better player. So I'm not going to say it's going to be like aimbot, guys. You will try all these different values and different scripts and stuff like that. But because of the bloom mechanism that's built within Fortnite, there's nothing that's going to be totally like aimbot. But however, you will notice, especially with these newer SMGs, the recoil works really, really well now. And then, of course, you also get that extra aim assist in close range fights. And that's what's very, very important. And of course, we'll get into the macros and all that into another video. But basically what macros allows you to do is you could actually hit one button and it'll do a certain combination of things for you. For instance, they have on some of these scripts, they have the Tifu mod, just for instance, where you can click a button and shoot and it'll build a wall right after you shoot. So there's a lot of macros and stuff which we'll get into. So we'll keep it basic for now, just showing you how to get started with the Fortnite Chapter 3 Season 1 pack. And then once you get comfortable with this, we'll move into the macros and all that special build modifications and stuff like that. So the latest game pack that they have right now is the Fortnite Chapter 3 Season 1 pack. Now the first thing that you'll want to do when you open up your Zen, of course, make sure everything's plugged in. Drag and drop this to whatever slot you want, and then go ahead and hit play once you save all your settings. So we're going to go through the settings real quick, kind of explain what you need to change and what they are, and then we'll kind of let you decide whether you want to try this pack out or move on to a different script. Now the first thing you need to do is change your loadout. I'm on Builder Pro if you're on Combat Pro, or even if you are on custom layouts. You'll need to go in on custom layout and change all these buttons to whatever you do in game. So whatever actions you do in game, you'll have to actually go in and change each and every value that's in this for this specific button. Now that's one that's gonna take a minute, but it's not too bad, guys. Just kind of remember, you know, naturally sometimes you have to go back in the game and kind of remember what button you're hitting because it's just muscle memory. But for myself, luckily I'm on Builder Pro, so it's gonna change all those buttons for me. I don't have to actually change anything when it comes to that. So once you get done with that, guys, you're going to scroll on down and then you'll get into your specialty activator. Of course, make sure that is enabled as well. And then, of course, we'll get into the switch mode setting. So this is what you have to match in game. So whatever you value you have for your edit hold time, 
in game you're gonna have to change that right here so go in your game see what edit hold time you have change that and you're good to go there and of course in game input look curve it does not apply to me slide hold time is not a huge deal to me either especially now that you can slide as long as you want so i don't really change that as much now one thing you will want to do is in game edit on release if that is enabled make sure you go ahead and turn this on if it's not enabled you can leave it off but a lot of people I think have it enabled guys. So make sure you go ahead and change that and then whatever right stick dead zone you have in the game itself, if you've changed that value or if it's on a different value than 20, make sure you guys go ahead and change that as well. Now one thing that's very important guys, when you're in the Fortnite game, you do have to have your vibration enabled. It will not work at all if your controller vibration is turned off within Fortnite. Now you can come back to this pack and enable the block game rumble so you don't actually have those game vibrations but for this to work this will actually need to be turned on within the fortnite game itself now one cool option within this pack is the mode tracking now what this does basically is it's detecting what type of mode that you're playing or during the game what type of actions you're doing within the game right so let's say that you're just running around at that point it's not going to be worried about soft aim as much or edit on release or anything like that your screen's not going to be shaking it's really really neat to give a better definition of it we'll pull up the manual real quick and just kind of tell you about it and what they say is basically a set this option to enable to have the game pack intelligently track the current mode you are in mode tracking will temporarily pause active mods which may interfere with certain mods such as aim assist when not in combat mode eliminate shaking and building editing and using your pickaxe so like say when you're using your pickaxe the editing mods and build mods are not going to be enabled or if you're just running around the aim assist mods are not going to be enabled so things like that it's just intelligently tracking depending on what you're doing within the game so this is something i've been playing around with it's pretty cool so you don't have that screen check when you're just running around or if you're driving a vehicle or whatnot so i would go ahead and turn that on guys if you want and then of course if you want that enabled to where it actually shows you on the oled screen you can go ahead and enable that as well all right so the recoil gets a little bit complicated depending on what slot you're having and if you want to be able to change between slots you know depending on which weapons you're using so a lot of times you definitely want to enable anti-recoil if you want to use weapon slots i only really recommend if you only use a certain gun i do recommend using the anti-recoil however with the different weapon slots you want to make sure you usually use using the same guns. For instance, slot one, if you have a certain strength here, if you're using the AUG, you could turn that down. You don't get much recoil with it, but you could turn it to about a 10 or 11, leave that there. And then if you have in your weapon slot two, that SMG that pulls up like crazy, you obviously wanna crank that up to about a 15 or 20. And then usually if you have a shotgun and weapon slot three, you don't really need much recoil on that. So you might turn it down a little bit, just depending on which guns you have in certain slots. So keep that in mind, guys. If you have different guns in different matches, this can get a little bit funky, especially say you have your AUG in weapon slot two, which usually normally you would have your SMG that pulls up like crazy. Everybody knows that SMG I'm talking about now. So kind of keep that in mind, guys. Try to keep your weapons, use the same weapons within the game and put those recoil values to match whatever guns you usually keep in those slots so you can go ahead and customize all that or you can just leave anti-recoil enabled and then have the weapon ai kind of do it for you it's not perfect but it's still pretty good in and of itself moving on down guys we do have soft aim this is where your aim assist comes in right all right guys so there's a couple of different options when it comes to aim assist like i was talking about you have your soft aim and then there's alternate assist which is not anything I've really dived into. Most people are still using soft aim. There's not a huge difference between the two. They're just two different types of aim assist. So basically what you're gonna do is change these values to whatever you feel comfortable with. A lot of people turn it down if they already have really good aim. So basically guys, when it comes to the aim assist, what you're changing within these values of themselves, soft aim ADS strength is whenever you're aiming down the sights, how much your screen's gonna be shaking, how hard you want it to be looking for that target and how big of a radius do you want? That's basically the easiest way to explain it. Aim assist in itself, the way it works is it's a circular motion. It looks for a target within that circular motion whenever you're aiming in on somebody. So basically you just wanna put that at whatever you're comfortable with. If it's shaking too much, make sure you crank it down. And of course, fire strength is whenever you're shooting, how snappy do you want that aim assist to kick in? If you want it really snappy, go ahead and crank it up. If you don't want it to be too snappy, if you have pretty good tracking, because some, what sometimes can happen if you have this too high, if you're fighting two guys within the same box, it might lock off of somebody that's up to some player you already downed. So be careful not to turn the fire strength too high. 
Now the ADSF, the way that works, guys, it depends if you really want that long range versus close range aim assist. The lower the range, the better it's gonna be for long range weapon. Now the higher the strength is gonna be better for close range fights. So it's kind of a give or take, guys. Do you want better aim assist in close range fights or do you want better aim assist in long range fights? If it was me personally, I always go with close range fights because that's usually when you die is close range fights. Not normally do you get beamed from 1500 meters away because you can build or you know you can just run behind a rock now and you have that shield protection so this is something you might want to turn up if you want better close range aim assist go ahead and turn that up a little bit if you want better long range aim assist and like i said long range aim assist is still not perfect because of the bloom effect you could go ahead and turn this value down and then of course the fire steps also how fast how snappy do you want it adjust that accordingly it's totally up to you guys i can't give you all the same values because everybody plays on different sensitivities uses different guns different ping different consoles pc you know all that stuff so there's not going to be certain set of values that are going to work for me that might translate to you just because i might have a little bit better tracking this may work for me but then again for you it may not be enough you might have to crank it up or you might have better aim and then you might need a little bit less so play around with these settings play around with these values don't crank it too high always adjust it a little bit by the default value and then go from there as you go along now we do have rapid fire guys this is only for semi-automatic weapons do not turn this on if you're using mostly automatic so i usually leave this off and of course tap fire it kind of gives you the effect of that l2 spam but it is not fully automatic as well it kind of is like a burst mode so keep that in mind i usually leave it off all right guys i hope you're with me i hope you're still sticking with me this is where it can get very very interesting now what i recommend doing is kind of reading all what these mods do i'm not going to go through all of them but basically what they allow you to do is turn on one of these ads mods when you ads and fire this is good for some people but with how everybody plays it may not be the best to turn this on this is what i was talking about earlier and we'll get into macros with scripts and stuff like that later you can create macros to where maybe if you're using mouse and keyboard you could hit like the l key on your keyboard and it might do a triple ramp but when it comes to the basic mods for controller this is kind of what you get the basic macros right here now of course you have your crouch aim your jump aim dynamic crouch aim slide aim pump smg fire build smg pump weight build and then of course the tfu combo which i was talking about earlier basically what that does is whenever you turn that on you shoot and then after you shoot it's going to build a wall now this can be annoying of course if you don't want it to always do that so only use these if you're very confident that you're going to be in close race fights and you can turn this on and off so if you wanted to turn this on there's quick toggles for it and it's easy to do that all you have to do is hold left trigger and then right on the d-pad to turn this on or off but like i said it can get kind of annoying and come into play when you don't want it to so be careful when using this but they're pretty self-explanatory for instance if you want to pump smg what it's going to do is as soon as you shoot your pump it's going to switch to your smg right after for you where you don't actually have to hit that button to switch automatically and the same thing goes for fire build smg so as soon as you fire a gun it's going to build a wall for you and then switch to your smg so these are kind of like macros already built into it but use these very very carefully like i said sometimes they can help you sometimes they can hurt you play around with them and see how you like it and then you can incorporate any of these into your gameplay if you want but for me i don't really use any of them just because it's kind of one of those things that i could use on accident so i usually leave this off unless i'm running around in playground mode and of course fire mod we have that as well and that's basically the same thing as ads mod except whenever you're hip firing and you're actually shooting as well so it has the same exact mods it's just instead of when you're ads aiming down the sights it's when you're firing so i definitely don't want to turn this on for ads mod i really wouldn't recommend doing that unless you want maybe crouch aim so when you're adsing from long distances you'll be crouching that's the only one maybe i would turn on or maybe you could turn on dynamic crouch aim but when it comes to the fire mods these are whenever you come into play when it comes to tfu combo or maybe you want to do the pump smg swap which is not a bad option so keep that in mind pump smg is probably the one i would leave on all the time if you want to just because you're always going to be shooting your shotgun in a close fight so that's the only one i would leave on to be honest with you and then you could kind of go through and play around with the rest 
All right guys, so fast edit, basically what that allows you to do is hold down your edit button and as you're selecting those tiles, it's gonna edit them for you. So this is where you have to go in and change the delay. How long do you wanna have to hold down that edit button while you're selecting those tiles before it edits them for you? You could turn this all the way down if you wanna edit very, very quickly. So all you gotta do guys, hold down your edit button as you're selecting tiles, it's gonna edit that wall for you. And then of course, instant reset, it just allows you to tap your reset button instead of having to confirm it, which I think they already have that mode within Fortnite itself, so it's not a really big deal if you had that on or not. And then of course, insta edit, it's gonna automatically confirm a build when you're editing it. This isn't really a big deal either. I think they have this enabled within Fortnite of itself now. You don't have to confirm a build. So especially those on builder mode. So you can leave these disabled if you want to. The fast edit is pretty cool if you wanna hold down the edit button just for a couple seconds and automatically edit. It's a little bit quicker than normally doing it. So that's something you might wanna consider. And of course you have your action mod if you wanna slide cancel or bunny hop or both. That's something you could turn on. I don't really mess with that. Uh, the slide now is pretty good within Fortnite. And the movement in itself within Fortnite has really improved. It's kind of thrown in that war zone factor. So uh, turn that on if you want to. Gyro boots I don't recommend turning on. Basically what that does is as you tilt your controller, your controller's aim assist and your crosshair is gonna move depending on which direction you're turning it. So I would definitely leave that disabled. And then that's pretty much it. Besides hair triggers, it's gonna give you a little bit faster response time when you're holding down those triggers. It kind of gives you that extra, I think it, where you only have to hold it down 20% before they're activated. So it does give you that extra split advantage as if you're on mouse. So definitely check that out if you're interested. But that pretty much breaks down all of the Fortnite Chapter 3 pack. We'll get into some more gameplay and some of the macros with mouse and keyboard. This is going to be kind of a series of videos, guys, to kind of break down as we play more Fortnite and get back into Fortnite a little bit more. I know Fortnite has been revived a little bit, especially with no build. If you haven't tried it out, guys, make sure you guys go back, try it out if you played Fortnite before or even if you have it. The no build option is good for me because it became too sweaty, if I'm being honest. I didn't want to build for 50 minutes before fighting some one but the no build option definitely eliminates that so that's why we're kind of going to do these series of videos so i first wanted to start out with breaking down this pack breaking it all down explaining what all of these mean and then you can decide for yourself what you want to turn on and then go play and see how you like it that pretty much covers it with this pack guys let me know in the comments below if you use this pack if you use it within fortnite if you're playing fortnite again I appreciate all of the support. You watching this video means the world to me. We will see you on the next video. Join the Patreon if you need help with your clients. Check out NordVPN if you need a VPN. We're out. Deuces.